Out doing some shed hunting again today. Lucas Psycho is from North Dakota, hunts public land, and he really lives up to his name. The kid's got moxie and seems to always find a way to get it done in the deer woods. This is the Psycho's Rough Cut. Watch it if you dare. Oh, it's right here on the ditch. Oh, that is a big four pointer. I think this is one of them deer that I passed this year. He got a big, long, swooping main beam. He's going to be a freaking stud next year. Whew. I know exactly which deer this is. God, this sucker just was everywhere this year. I watched this deer so many times, passed this same deer up so many times. Good to see he's supposed to be alive still anyways. I got this deer on video, uh, especially in the, I think it was October 27th I got video of this deer is when I could come and film the beet field the first time this year with all them deer. At Whitetail Zinc, we do all the work and don't hunt with outfitters or guides on huge pieces of managed property. We're do-it-yourselfers just like you. We're not professional athletes, but sometimes we feel like professional tree trimmers. We have extremely high standards and only compete with ourselves. I think I just passed about a thousand inches. <laughs> we don't have any cool catchphrase. Let's party. Or feel the need to use face paint to fit in. We only use gear that works and not because somebody's paying us to do so. The only thing that makes us special is our level of dedication. Well, except that Dallas Fort Worth wears a cape and is missing his trigger finger. Welcome to Whitetails Inc. I got, got to come out here and get some walking in. And uh, walking through some bedding area and come across this horn sticking straight down in the snow. All I seen was that, that dark, you know, out of place color sticking up out of the snow, kind of the shape of a beam. And I was actually about 10 yards away when I spotted it. That's within the last, you know, probably a couple days anyways. Well, here we are. <sighs> Nice four pointer. So we drove the sled down, got down to the field edge, and we started walking in. And there was just tracks and stuff everywhere, just like there has been. And I told Brandon, just wait, just wait till we get up to that Russian olive grove, and we're gonna freaking hit some horns, cause that's just every year that's where they lose them. That's we just split it, we just split it in half. We each took a side, been working back and forth slowly through the trails and stuff, on top of the bedding areas and, and everything, and. Lo and behold, I was on this side and I found a horn that, oh, this, this deer just, he's got a hold of me. I mean, and if I ever could get a shot at this deer, which seems impossible because the older he's getting, it's just like he is, and he is invisible. And when he does show up, he only shows up at the right time for him. And, and it's just, he's just that smart. He's a nine year old deer now. Next year he's gonna be 10. And it's just unbelievable. Here we go, baby. <laughs> Look at that thing! He's got velvet all over the back of it still and everything. Holy good God. Look at the mass on that thing. Look at that. Oh my God. Would not score for nothing, but I would shoot this over a five and a half year old freaking 160 any day. That's not even a joke. I certainly would. You know I would, right, Brandon? Oh, yeah. I've got so much history with this deer. 
My dad missed this deer. I mean, look at all that. Still has velvet on there. He's just so goofy back here and stuff that that velvet's tucked away so perfectly that it just can't get rid of it. You can tell that if I could show you like a horn from this deer when he was in his prime, four and a half, five, he is all of this, but his tines were up here. He was a stud. He was probably a 160 class deer, you know, at least 150s, and he was just the most goofy shaped buck. You know, and the, the day this deer di disappears and I know he's dead, that's going to be a sad day because I've known this deer since I was a sophomore in high school. I just, I admire him so much. He's just so smart to get by this long. It's just unbelievable. Oh, well, there should be. Horn number 32 of the year. Nice horn, baby. That's him. I got this guy on camera. That's an awesome horn. I'm glad to see that this deer is alive still. Because he's going to be a stud. He is. Just what an awesome buck. Jeez. That's a freaking cool deer. I mean, I just picked that horn, this horn up, 150 yards over there, and I just found the other side right here. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I can see the big sticker on the G2 already. I hope it isn't broken. Look at that. Oh, he's got even a sticker starting on his G3. Oh. That is a freaking awesome deer. <sighs> Cow. <laughs> Look at that sucker, man. Oh, I am so freaking glad he didn't die this year. I, I, I made my mind up I wasn't gonna shoot him. When I got the picture of him, I wasn't gonna shoot him. I just knew he wasn't, he wasn't ready to be killed. And I mean, he's got sticker, sticker, starting one here, double brow tines. I mean, big swooping main beams. He could he could be a 150 next year, real easy, upper 150s even. Look at the character on that horn. God, I love shit hunting. I love it. He's this is just a freaking beastly side. He's got just awesome mass. I know this is only a four-year-old deer. This is a four-year-old deer. He could be just an awesome three-year-old, three and a half. He very well could be. Look at the size of that brow tine right there. Holy cow, man. That's that's just a stud. Ah, if this thing can just make it. I'll pick up on him next year, and I very well shoot this deer next year. I know he'll be mature enough. In the pictures, they look like three or four tops. Awesome. I just come across a monster set. Ooh, it's a monster set. Woo. Look at all the blood on that one. Oh, look at that sucker. That is a giant right there, folks. He probably scores about a 15 inches Boone and Crockett. It's a beast. It's the monarch of the timber. Out doing some shed hunting again today. And I just come across the other side to the willow buck. I found the other way back in the timber a couple weeks ago. Oh, it is. Oh my god, this thing's got some mass to it. Oh, it's froze. <sighs> Holy cow. Look at this goofy thing. <laughs> that thing is so ridiculous. You know, it's just crazy. 
I've known of this deer forever, it seems like, since sophomore in high school. What, I must have been 17, 16 then? And I shot at him. It was one of my, you know, first couple years I was really getting after, uh, getting after the deer kind of on my own here and there without my dad. And I shot at this deer on video. First video clip I've ever shot at a deer in. And from then on, it was just this deer, I just could not pick up a shed. I could not find a shed horn to it. And the last two years now, this year and then last year, I've found his sheds, both of them. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna check it out, see which one it is. <laughs> exactly what I thought. The other side. Wow. I have the other side to this shed at home. This is two years ago. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> Second of the day, baby, right there. Really heavy four pointer. There's got to be some more in here. It's just awesome. You guys, I think we should start zigzagging right up through this higher area over here. And then uh, kind of come back across this way because me and Brandon walked a lot of this stuff on this side, but I don't think we walked this stuff enough. Oh, oh there it is! Another one! Oh, it's the other side! <laughs> Hines down, that's why. Woo! God, I looked this direction like 15 times and I just finally just noticed the curve and the main beam sticking up. <laughs> Woo! I was just saying that, how hard it is to see in this stuff. <laughs> oh! That's gonna be a pig deer one of these days, one of these years. He's heavy. Two and a half, three year old. God, he's got mass, like really good mass on the Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see what this guy turns into. We have uh, discovered a dandy shed horn across this creek. And we're gonna go through hell to get it. And anyways, we got our nice canoes up on the corner up here. The only way we can get to it. We gotta go over those rapids. Thanks for watching part one of the Psycho. Next week, Psycho Go Psycho. You've heard and seen testimony about Ozonix, and I understand your apprehension about scent elimination products. It took me three years to try one myself, but I have got to tell you, they work. The Ozonix HR200 is a bow hunter's best friend. It weighs less than two pounds and is super compact, and besides my bow, it's the most important piece of equipment I take into the field. If you don't believe me, do some research and find people who've used them. Ozonix technology works and can and will beat a whitetail's nose time and time again. Check them out at ozonixhunting.com.